we have uh, already discussed leadership styles, motivation and how they relate to the work behavior in any organization. If you would recollect that in the leadership styles, we were talking about empowering leadership style, where the leader is trying to empower the employees in the organization. This is one of the recent additions to our understanding of leadership styles. Today, to understand that what is the meaning of empowerment and how employees feel motivated if they are empowered, this is going to be discussed. Empowerment, in fact, many researchers have tried to say that empowerment is also embedded into participative management. In other words, participative management when we are trying to implement, idea is that you are trying to empower the employees in an organization. So, let us see what is the process of empowerment, how researchers have tried to uh, define empowerment and the other correlates of this process. So, we will talk about empowered employees, empo empowered organizations and empowerment process. So, let us see if the purpose, the purpose of one of the major purpose I should say of the managerial function is that the manager tries to see that the employees feel empowered. So, what will happen if employees are empowered, they become responsible towards job, have a sense of ownership they feel satisfied in whatever they accomplish, they have control over whatever they do and how things are done. Also in this process is the recognition of their ideas. and the knowledge that they are important for organizations. So, you can see that this is what employees feel when they are empowered. There are many techniques, participative management is one such major technique that we are trying to implement in the organizations of today. On the other hand, we are also talking about empowered organizations. Now, here it refers to the work culture, the climate of the organization and where we are trying to suggest that in an empowered organization, people should not expect to be told what to do. People should know what to do, that means the communication is so clear, the instructions are so clear and people are so much involved in the work that you need not tell them that you have to do this and that, they are so responsible people. <coughs> if that is the work climate of an organization which we may call as the empowered organizations. Now, empowerment as a process has been 
researched and, def and the various uh, authors have tried to give us the definitions of what empowerment would mean. So, let us now look at couple of uh, definitions and this will clarify your understanding of what we exactly mean by empowered employee, empowered organization or empowerment as a process. You can see the, the these are just you know from uh, the various writings of the authors. So, uh, there is no order or anything of that kind. We are talking about uh, empowerment as the community that the empowerment means communities gain mastery over their lives. Empowerment is defined as a process through which people become strong enough to participate within share in the control of an influence events and institutions affecting their lives. Empowerment is also defined by Bell and Zemke as the self generated exercise of judgment. In fact, when we move on to various definitions of empowerment, uh, we will also uh, see in a uh, later part of our discussion, we will also discuss that these days we are talking about empowered employees and also empowerment of women in organizations. That is one of the very, very current concerns that management thinkers have. Sternberg, he has defined empowerment as giving authority to make everyday decisions. And you can relate to some of the theories of management like participative management and you can see that many of these definitions are trying to talk about participative work climate and participative management. Then Patterson, he has defined empowerment as the authority that is delegated from those who have positional power. Empowerment means empowering to the lowest possible level employees within the organization or society. We are talking about empowerment as a, as a uh, process which is being used by managers and also by the perhaps the policy makers in terms of the social development. That is why the, the definitions that we are discussing here encompass all these, all these factors. <coughs> now, empowerment also means to develop problem solving capabilities in the people at these levels these levels means all, all levels in fact. So, that means it includes problem sol solving capabilities. Empowerment refers to assisting these people when we say the, the participants in a system what we are meaning here, the employees, the participants. So, empowerment means to assist these people in taking charge of their own uh, de destinies. Crawford on the other hand has said empowerment would mean to help all these people to achieve their full potential. 
So, here also we are talking about achieving intrinsic potential of people by giving them empowerment, we are trying to unfold their potentials, giving them that opportunity. And, and with every definition you can see that we are basically trying to say that in, in an organization, if you want to manage very effectively, uh, one of the major concerns today is empowering employees and creating an empowering climate. And many authors are trying to uh, do their research and propose number of theories and observations and here we are discussing some of those. Further, Staples as you can see is suggesting that to have positive impact of empowerment spill over the entire lives of these people. So, here we are extending a step ahead and we are not talking about that when employees are joining your organization, it is only within the uh, within the uh, we can say the boundaries of that organization, but it should have impact on their overall life. So, not only uh, when they are at the place of work, but overall life must be enriched by the, the um, issue or the opportunity of um, empowerment. Now, empowerment is also defined as a process by which oppressed persons gain some control over their lives by taking part with others in the development of activities and structures that allow people increased in involvement in matters which affect them directly. So, that is a process. Process it begins, it has the correlates and then finally, it has the outcome. We will take a couple of other points of views. Employees make their own choices. When they are empowered, they take their own choices to speak out on their own behalf and control their lives. <coughs> Pearson has talked about empowerment in terms of voicing the silenced, owing one's own vision, facilitating transformation from subject to object, creating autonomy and raising self-esteem. Yet another uh, emphasis has been placed on empowerment as a psychological process. So, some authors have tried to uh, give us a concept called the psychological empowerment and psychological empowerment is defined as a motivational construct manifested in four cognitions meaning competence, self determination and impact. Cognitions are the higher mental processes which refer to your choices, your decision making, information processing and overall you know the higher order thinking. So, psychological empowerment is an additional explanation that we find in the recent years. And in fact, one of our studies we have found that when employees have psychological empowerment, 
they also demonstrate greater commitment, greater uh, uh, work, uh, much better work out outcomes are there. We conducted a survey of the Indian industries using psychological empowerment as one of the major factors. And that is what you know we have found in most of our um, Indian industries. Gupta has tried to uh, define empowerment as the process of sharing power and providing an enabling environment by removing hurdles in order to encourage employees to take initiative and decisions to achieve organizational and individual goals. Lee and co, they have suggested that the psychological state of a subordinate perceiving four dimensions of meaning, meaningfulness, competence, self-determination and, and impact which is affected by empowerment behavior of the supervisors. So, these are the four psychological states which constitute the empowerment behavior of supervisors. In all these definitions as you can see that we are adding on to certain, um, certain newer explanations, certain new variables you can see even though the there is a common element also uh, going on which one can say that is reflected into the process of participative management. But every author has tried to make an addition by looking at the process very deeply. Therefore, the empowerment process based on all these explanations we are trying to uh, then uh, or oh, there is there is an error here. Stage 1 is conditions leading to psychological state of empowerment. <coughs> Organizational factors are the first one, supervision this needs to be corrected supervision reward system nature of job. When we are talking about empowerment these are some of the factors which are important and then we go on to understand supervision, supervision we go on to the next uh, stage and then where we use the managerial strategies and techniques for empowerment. Here you can see that participative management is very very important and in fact all the other uh, techniques of motivating employees that we have already discussed in our earlier uh, um, lectures are also included here. So, empowerment is many things at the same time and uh, there is a uh, it is an interwoven process you know uh, with, with the motivation, leadership style and overall work culture. So, so we cannot say that we will uh, I just isolate empowerment and not talk about motivation, leadership and work culture. We have to understand these in totality. But for the purpose of understanding the process, we are trying to talk mainly about empowerment today. So, the use of managerial strategies and techniques would include participative management, goal setting, feedback system, 
modeling contingencies and competence e based rewards job enrichment and of course the list could be much 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 longer but uh, uh, few aspects we are trying to include here but you can see that we have talked about most of these when we were discussing our motivational um, strategies this lists are not exhaustive we can add in a number of other factors but for the purpose of understanding today we have uh, included couple of factors at this third stage which refers to providing self efficacy information to subordinates using different sources and here we have listed uh, four sources inactive attainment vicarious experience verbal information emotional arousal that's what you know as a manager one could provide information to the subordinates using different strategies and some of these are here also in the next step we are talking about the results if you have been part your subordinates or if you have been part your employees then why we are expecting some results and some of those which we have listed here that we can strengthen their efforts we can also find that performance expect expectancy of level in the personal <coughs> efficacy that we can see you would recollect that whenever we are talking about uh, management uh, whenever we are talking about management studies there are two major concerns that we have about performance management and the satisfaction of employees because people are important and without them we cannot manage any system or any situation or any organization therefore performance expectancy of level in personal efficacy is very very important here at the fifth stage which where you know we have taken in the idea from conger and kanan goes work this is suggesting that empowerment will also lead to some behavioral effects which will mean that initiation and persistence of behavior to accomplish task objectives again we are talking about uh, performance management uh, which is one of the major uh, concerns for us but here the specific task objectives we are talking about therefore when we are trying to understand the process of empowerment employees need the organization as much as the organization needs employees there is not a, any kind of either or situation both need each other and there, therefore employees should be treated as they want to be treated by the leader in the process of empowerment we have to consider number of the number of factors and some such factors are that both employees and organization they need each other so they are complementary actually to the process of uh, the process of uh, development or performance 
therefore the employee should be treated as they want to be treated by the leaders. Employee uh, empowerment also leads to total quality management. You must have heard about this and we have talked about total quality <coughs> management in some other references also. The quality management is there in the production process, quality management is there in whatever you perform, any task performance. So, the quality becomes very important and in fact, we can say that quality is there in the minds of people and we can create a system where we have total quality management. Here we have listed couple of factors which are necessary for having total quality management which relate to empowerment of employees. So, the climate should have trust, people should be given responsibilities, participation is inevitable here, then of course, the harmony and group affiliation. Earlier we have also talked about the group behavior and how people behave in a group earlier in some of the earlier lectures. We have also talked about responsibilities uh, and various types of you know factors for job enrichment. So, we can see that we are also trying to relate some of the motivational strategies here with employee empowerment to see that the total quality management is achieved, which is our goal because in today's uh, globalized uh, competitive uh, world, unless we have quality, <coughs> we cannot achieve results and to achieve quality empowerment becomes very important. This is what we are trying to, to um, understand now. So, you can see that how closely linked are the issues that we have discussed in couple of earlier modules and, and what we are doing today. This brings us to that concept total quality management again. Total quality management in an organization, in an organizational strategy in fact. Uh, this accompanies the techniques that quality product and services to the customers could be given. Which accompany techniques? Not which accompany techniques, which accompany techniques that quality product and services to the customers that you give. The techniques relate to the quality product and services to the customers. Total quality management also refers to make it right for the customers respond to every customer inquiry, customer is always right, not only meet customers expectations, but delight them with the process. Teamwork and cooperations are important for individual action and production. Now, we are trying to relate empowerment to total quality management and we are trying to see that how total quality management could be achieved through this, uh, this human factor, we are talking about the human factor. Not that the technical and the other um, aspects are not important, but right now our discussion is concentrated on the human factors and we are trying to say that human factors coupled with other uh, technical factors will result into total quality management, but these factors are 
equally important. We have also talked about teamwork earlier in our discussion. You can now relate the concepts which of teamwork also to, to total quality management as we have done early in the earlier part of um, our modules. Now in total quality management, everyone should be involved in the quality effort and what could be the, the, uh, the process for that? The process for that will be empowering employees and using participative management there. If you want really to involve employees in the total quality effort, then you have to involve everyone in the decision making in whatever way you could perhaps and there is the use of participative management. You have to treat your employees that way you want your customers to be treated. Often we make a distinction, but you have to treat your employees very well. You have to respond to every employee's suggestions for quality improvement. Never be satisfied with the level of quality and always strive for continuous improvement. These issues when we are raising, these issues also relate to quality uh, improvement and performance also in terms of your own performance you can see. The concept of quality management has been well demonstrated in the quality circles concept that uh, the Japanese management system has given to us. In the quality circles which are being uh, practiced in the Japanese industries and now of course that idea uh, we have borrowed and elsewhere you know in the, in the other parts of the world people have borrowed that idea of uh, quality management using quality circles. These are the Japanese um, um, industries contributions to us. The idea of uh, quality circles this relates to involving employees of all levels in decision making and they have tried to institutionalize it in their organizations starting from the process of a suggestion box to a very serious brainstorming exercise and really coming out with the technical reports. So, the quality circles, the concept has been very well institutionalized in Japanese industries and in fact, uh, in, uh, in uh, this process they have been able to arrive at very many high level technical decisions also, say design of a product. They have been able to achieve lot of success in this regard. That is why and you can see that quality circles is a special case of participative management and this is being practiced in most of the successful companies today. Okay. But this is mainly coming from the human side of analyzing uh, the, the quality management. So, when we are looking at the total quality management we are wanting to empower our employees and we are trying to achieve results. 
what uh, we are trying to understand here is that whenever we are implementing any uh, any principle of management basically there is there is an interwoven idea with the technical management and the the other principles of management so the total quality management actually is a movement it's a total process okay where empowerment becomes a very important component we have already uh, sort of discussed the techniques used but let me uh, let me repeat it again we have to create a participative culture if you really want people to get empowered and if you really want people to uh, to give you the best quality so the participative culture is something very important and then of course the work design and job enrichment the ideas which we have discussed from uh, hersberg's theory you would rec recollect earlier in our discussion we had discussed the ideas of job enrichment then we are we are not here uh, totally deleting the hygiene factors which again are the factor one of hersberg's theory because hygiene factors if you would recollect are the prerequisites for job enrichment and so the hygiene factors in the work and living environment are also very important then we have earlier discussed about money as a motivator that was a, our discussion monday and we can see that fringe benefits and other welfare measures are also very important so we have to design the whole system as to how to achieve the best results by combining a number of uh, variables and number of factors to arrive at the the best performance then of course we have also discussed uh, the the communication process at length and effective communication makes a very effective manager people have much greater satisfaction and uh, this also results into better performance and people get empowered they feel empowered in this process we we are trying to optimize the the human capital we are trying to optimize the human capital by empowering people and achieving results therefore the levels of empowerment we can say from very little to very high level here uh, we have tried to put that as very little empower empowerment as reflected in the traditional production line firms that is very little empowerment is there we are talking about say the manufacturing uh, scenario of uh, some organization that how much empowerment are we giving to people in different uh, uh, different uh, production system setup at the, the first level we are saying very little empowerment which is reflected in the traditional production line uh, firms then moderate uh, employ uh, involvement as reflected in organizations that involve employees in terms of quality circles and suggestions that i have discussed just now but do you all understand the traditional uh, um, uh, industry where you have a production line where uh, people are working you know the the sometimes the in the production line uh, a man is part of that production line system in that the the possibility of empowerment is reduced because every day you are working you know in the production line the same uh, perhaps performance is there your uh, creative 
your creativity is not there, your involvement which comes from within is also not there. So, at the second level we are talking about moderate involvement as reflected by organizations that involve employees and the examples I have already discussed the quality circles that we are practicing all over the globe now the um, which originated uh, from the Japanese, uh, Japanese uh, system and the suggestion box that we are just discussed. These are the, uh, the at the second level the process of involving and empowering people. Then we are also talking about uh, empowerment at the third level. So, fair, uh, at the third level we are talking about fairly substantial involvement as reflected by organizations where jobs are designed so that employees can use a variety of skills and have a great degree of autonomy in, in carrying out the job. So, here a step ahead in terms of the involvement or empowerment of people in an organization. Okay, where employees can use a variety of skills and have greater degree, degree of autonomy in carrying out their work. Some element of job enrichment is also coming here if you can see some element of job enrichment is also coming here. And of course, the high involvement in which Personnel throughout share information and work together to solve problems and complete tasks. And this is a case of total participative management uh, that we have discussed, you know, uh, also uh, as part of our earlier discussion, and maybe we will take up that, you know, in much greater details in the later part also of the course. So, the high involvement in which uh, people share information and work together to solve problems and complete tasks. Having discussed that the, the empowerment could be at a very lower level, could be at intermediate level or could be at the highest level. So, the idea is that empowerment leads to better quality management, better involvement of people, better results and also this gives satisfaction to the employees and better performance to us. Because when we are trying to manage a situation and we are trying to talk about management, obviously we are looking for some results and empowerment is one such uh, situation and a strategy we can say. Therefore, the benefits of empowerment, this is we are now trying to summarize the benefits and also uh, uh, before we close for today, we will be talking about some of the, the difficulties and drawbacks. So, uh, let us now see what are the benefits of empowerment uh, in an organization uh, for people, uh, for the buyers, their customers for the managers. So, the benefits, what are the benefits? So, more the, the we have tried to list a um, couple of them. The more rapid response to customer needs. Now, we will discuss some of the benefits of empowerment. In fact, we have been discussing that uh, the, the first benefit is uh, that more rapid response to customer needs could be achieved. You would recollect that uh, earlier we have discussed that for any organization we have to talk about employer, employee and also customers the same uh, for understanding the whole process. So, the, the most rapid response to customers needs 
that is important. We also have to see that reduction in time needed to provide the goods and the services that could be achieved using empowerment, increased employee satisfaction with the job, establishment of rapport between employ, employ, employers and uh, employees and customers, generation of better ideas about improving quality product and services and greater retention of customer loyalty. And these are some of the uh, some of the uh, benefits that we, we would certainly like to achieve by empowering our employees. In fact, this also summarizes the, the, uh, the number of definitions that we have taken and there we were try, trying to talk about what empowerment is all about. And we have now seen that if we are empowering our employees, we are likely to get this. So, overall if we say is the total quality management, performance, satisfaction and, and so on. Therefore, to put empowerment into action, we have talked about this in, in many ways, uh, but let us put it uh, there is uh, action driven approach which will suggest that you should discard conventional fixed ideas about work which often people do and they, they uh, have a very very fixed and rigid mind and they think uh, um, that only this is the way uh, a particular thing could be done. But if there are uh, uh, empowering uh, situations and if there are there is empowering organization then perhaps you are going to give this opportunity to your employees that they could discard the conventional and fixed ideas and come out with creativity, their new ideas. Thinking about how to do it, start by questioning current practices which often many formal organizations do not encourage that questioning about the current practices. They that is why they do not begin to make improvements immediately and correct mistakes immediately. And so, if you really want empowerment to be taken into action, then you have to create these conditions for, for achieving better results. That is why we have tried to put that as the empowerment to action driven approach. So, as, as a manager you have to be very very uh, alert you know in terms of uh, how, how you are empowering your employees, why you are empower, empowering your employees, what strategies could be used and so on. However, there are few drawbacks as you know even the best thing might have uh, some drawbacks. Empowerment also when we analyze as a process we find that number of uh, drawbacks may uh, still be there which you have to take care as a manager. When you are at the place of work you have to see that if you are using empowerment then a word of caution how best you could use it and that is why the purpose of discussing these drawbacks is that you should be very uh, clear about that what are the limits. Okay, how much empowerment? Why? Because there may be some, uh, some something you know negative also. So let's see that more expensive, the empowerment uh, sometimes you know is more expensive in selecting personnel, because every management decision also needs to be considered you know in terms of the budgeting. Okay, because the best thing may be there, but in terms of budget you know it may. Uh, it may um, uh, run you know uh, to such a high limits that we have to decide somewhere. Time budgeting has to be there, the financial budgeting has to be there. Okay. Then more investment in training and uh, training of people. Again you know the, the issue of budgeting is coming. We give training and many organizations invite us for giving trainings, but 
for training again you know there is a budget and if I say that I will uh, spend you know 1 crore on empowerment training unless my budget really allows I may say that okay for this year let me just give you know 5 training uh, programs to this level of employees. So, so that is a drawback in the sense that even if I want that everyone should be given empowerment training possibly I cannot do it because of the, the uh, financial um, factors. Then uh, higher labor cost, see sometimes uh, when uh, we are working in, in industries for our research work uh, and uh, see the training of course, the training initiative has to come from the industry, but when we are going there for a research work and we are trying to tell them that we can um, sort of design your training programs based on the feedback that we might get. And when we are collecting wanting to collect data the labor cost is so high that often they do not allow us to collect data um, from their organizations and which is which is very very important for us if so their cooperation and that investment in the sense that if the higher labor cost is there and if I take away their time that means that much labor cost you know I am including in my in my research activity. So, for the for empowerment training and empowerment studies the labor cost is also one important factor. People might feel abundant and that it leads to it might lead to organizational anarchy not necessarily all the time, but it might. Then a poor use of em empowerment such as overspending on services to ensure customer satisfaction that is again you know detrimental to the whole process. So, we have put that you know as one of the drawbacks for you know, of uh, implementing um, empowerment in the organization. So, you can see that even the best practices that we are trying to implement in the organization also need to be carefully designed. Uh, and in terms of the overall organizational scenario. So, we have to involve the, uh, the policy makers of the organization, the uh, employees, the managers, middle level, the lower level, everyone okay, and then decide about how much of empowerment and how much of uh, budgeting and uh, how much what kind of a uh, design and who is going to give you know this training. For all that the use of participative management techniques again could be used. Nevertheless, what we have tried to discuss in today's discussion, today's uh, this module on empowerment is that if we really want successful organizations and if we really would like to achieve the competitive advantage, we have no choice than to empower our organizations and empower our employees and many other discussions that we have had and the in, in the, uh, the other modules that we are going to discuss in this course will also highlight some of the issues. So, let us now move on to some other issues. Here I would like to mention that I have uh, invited uh, number of uh, managers from industries the practicing managers and in one of the lectures in the future perhaps I am going to talk to them on number of issues including the process of empowerment. So, we close it for today.